Well, good day to you. It is November the 5th. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you happen to be. My name is Gary Willing. I want to welcome you to Search for Signs. And as I always like to do, point out if you're new, remind you if you haven't done this yet, that if you want to know more about my tray and the Masters of Wisdom, want to know more about the priorities of the teacher, even if you just want to see if there's any truth to this information, I hope that you take the time to check out some of the websites that I provided links for in the description portion of these videos. So websites like Share International, you can get all the background information you want about Maitreya, about his priorities. You can see images of these miracles. You can read articles from Ben's master. You can read letters to the editor of people such as myself, ordinary people who have, who have already met these masters and Maitreya in their, real, in their life and what they've learned and gained from their teachings and those kind of things already. And then you'll have a really good, clear understanding whether this is true for you or not. And hopefully you'll do it. They're all free. They're there for you whenever you want to look into it. And a lot of those websites talk about a lot of different things, but they do pertain to this information in some way. Now, if you want to come back and join the discussion, post comments, post your questions in the comments section, or you can email me at searchforsigns at mail.com. Now, I wanted to um, start with, let's see... Let's start with Robert Vasquez. And he just posted a comment. He said, the sort of cleavage, it's what is also going on in the world. Now, what is he talking about when he says the sort of cleavage? And what does he mean by it's going on in the world? Now, if you are an atheist or if you're perhaps Buddhist or Hindu or Muslim, you might not be aware of that, what the sort of cleavage is. But I bet you if you've read the Bible more than once, all the way through the New Testament at least, you will have come across a verse where Jesus said this, I come not to bring peace, but to bring a sword, to set father against son, mother against daughter, brother against brother, neighbor against neighbor, something to that effect. Might be out of order a little bit, but that's basically what he said. And why did he say it? Now, here's the thing. Amongst some Christian religious circles, and I've actually had some people comment on this channel from time to time that have expressed their view of what they were, what they think that Jesus was talking about. And one very popular view, but I think it's a gross misunderstanding of what Jesus said, is that Jesus, there's no reason, because of that statement that Jesus said, there is no reason to even try to bring about peace Peace is not possible. There'll be nothing but violence on this planet until the end of days, as they put it, or whatever, until Jesus comes back. And not only is it not only possible and never going to happen, but anybody who is talking about peace must be evil because Jesus said something totally different to that. And that's what they're thinking he said. And I think it's a gross misinterpretation of that statement in the Bible. Now... What I believe it means, and this is coming from the Ageless Wisdom teachings, is that, it, for one, it's not a sword. Jesus is not coming back carrying a, 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 piece of, a very sharp piece of metal with a handle on it and all that kind of stuff like a, a sword would look. And it also doesn't mean that peace isn't possible and we shouldn't try to bring about peace and how important it is to bring about peace. And it also doesn't mean that if somebody's talking about peace, it means they're evil. So... What does it mean exactly? Well, according to the Aegis Wisdom teachings, the sort of cleavage is the love nature of God and what it does to humanity. So at the time of Jesus, when he was in Palestine, speaking to that very tiny group of people in Palestine, this happened at this time too. And just as when the Buddha was speaking to uh, his group of people in India at the time when, when the Buddha was around. It happened with him too. Now it's happening on a global scale because Maitreya and the energies of Maitreya are affecting everyone on this planet because he's already speaking to all of humanity and not just a tiny, tiny group of people in one little country and we're, we don't have mass communications and all that kind of stuff. So that's why we're seeing it on a global scale and not just regionally. But it is the love nature of God, according to the ageless wisdom teachings, brings to the surface exactly who and what a person is or a group of people are or huma what humanity really is. 
And we all have different views of ourselves. Our ideal of who and what we are, what we think we are, what we perhaps present ourselves to others to be, isn't exactly who we really are. And we might be, we might have been fooling ourselves for so long that we don't, we're blind to who and what we really are. So, for instance, a person might think they have humanity's greatest interest at heart, but yet what they're doing is not only very selfish, but also very harmful to humanity. You see this all the time in political leaders. They have the ideal of, of changing the world, but yet when it comes down to the, to the nuts and bolts of what they're doing, it, they're just enriching themselves. And then they go back for another election and they present themselves again to their people like, look, if you elect me again, this is what's going to happen. Your life's going to get better because I'm only here for you, blah, 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 blah. But yet we see day in and day out exactly who they are. They might not even be seeing how bad and awful of a job that they're doing and who and what they really are. They might actually believe themselves to be that good, but they're not. So this energy, this energy of, of the Christ is bringing to the surface exactly who and what we are. And according to Ben's own master, not one single person out of the billions of people that are in incarnation on this planet, not one person is immune to this energy. It's affecting each and every one of us wherever we are on this planet. Bringing to the surface exactly who and what we really are, whether we want to see it or not. <laughs> and so if you're selfish, you become more selfish. If you're greedy, you become more greedy. If you're conservative, you become even more conservative. If you are a quote-unquote American patriot, you become even more patriotic in your own way, right? If you're selfless, you become more selfless. And it can work the other way, too. So somebody could be thinking they're the most awful person in the world, have no voice and those kind of things, but, and, and no leadership ability, but yet they actually do. And it brings that to the surface. And so it just depends on who and what you are. The other thing that it does, and this is very painful, and is it brings to the surface all the corruption in our systems of government, of economics, the social structures, even with some of our celebrities and so forth that we put on these pedestals that they must be the best of humanity that humanity can be because they're famous and they're rich or whatever it happens to be. And then something happens because they're not perfect and we see the corruption and it's painful. It's painful. And it's almost daily. We see it over and over and over again. It doesn't stop. You know what I mean? When... I can't remember a day where it, where something new isn't coming up about something, right? It's and it's there because of the mass media for all to see now. For the first time in humanity's history, we're we're able to see it all the corruption as clearly as we can see it, right? And it's not pleasant, right? Cuz it's we we live in a very corrupt world, right? Doesn't matter what country you live in, how corrupt the world is. Now, we also start to see our own corruption and what we're doing, and, and how we manipulate people, perhaps, or whatever. Whatever it happens to be, right? We see it, and it's just as painful for us to eventually see it within ourselves. But that is the sort of cleavage. Not that peace is not possible, or we shouldn't even try because it's never going to happen, or if somebody comes on the scene and starts talking about peace like, like Maitreya is, or, and says that peace is not only possible, but it's our... it's our very future depends on it is evil because they're talking about peace because it's somewhere in the Bible. Jesus said he, that, that he doesn't come to bring peace, but to bring a sword. That's so not true. But the other thing too, that it doesn't say in the Bible is that it's a temporary situation. So the divisions that we see are really just illusion. The divisions we see between right and left politics, between the Israelis and the Palestinians, between the Arabs and the Jews, between the Arabs and, or the the Muslims and the Hindus, between um, let's see the Ukrainians and the Russians. I mean, it goes on and on and on. And I even jokingly said, as a comment, um, as a reply to uh, Robert Vasco's comment, even vegans and meat eaters are divided. And they don't seem to see, see I mean, it's everywhere. Science and religion, mis, you know, everything. Between different religious groups. I mean, it's just, you can't get away from all the divisions. And this is because of the sort of cleavage like he's talking about. So thank you very much for the comment, Robert. But um, but the other thing too is is that it, it 
according to Maitreya, the divisions that we are seeing today, that we're suffering through as a humanity, there's a reason why. And I, again, it's because of the love nature of God, but there's a fundamental, not a fundamental, that's a wrong word to, to say. There is a long-term reason and benefit to humanity for these divisions. Is that humanity is coming up to the to the point in the road where we have to make a choice as a humanity. We have to see our future, two futures. One in where we keep doing what we're doing, living the way that we're living, and as God made green apples, eventually that will lead to the annihilation of the human experiment on this planet. And there will not be any life on this planet for not only human, but also the subhuman kingdoms. Gone forever. If we continue on the way that we're doing. So just as all our politicians are telling you, let's just keep doing the way we're doing it and everything's going to be fine. Well, if we keep doing it that way, that's the inevitable outcome of what we're doing today. That's one possible future. The other possible future is if we just try the principle of sharing. If nations learn to just give a little bit of their resources to other nations and so forth and so forth, that will bring about a little bit of trust, a little bit of more goodwill amongst those nations, ease some of the tensions that maybe were in between those two nations, will pull us back from the brink of, of annihilation, and will eventually bring about more goodwill Step by careful step will bring about peace, long-lasting peace, and then eventually will bring about manifested love on this planet. That's the futures that we have. Very simple. Two futures. No future for humanity or a future for humanity beyond what we could possibly imagine. But we have to learn how to live together. That's it. Maitreya puts it much simpler than I could ever do it. Without sharing, there will be no justice. Without justice, there will be no peace. And without peace, there will be no future for humanity. But as with most things, our interpretation of religious scriptures, our interpretation of what the events that are going on are not necessarily the most accurate. And it's important to look at it from more of a holistic view. You know, one, we are not going to destroy ourselves according to, ben, uh, according to Ben's master, according to Maitreya. So when the choice is presented to humanity, it, we will come to the point, because of the sort of cleavage, that we will be able to make the right choice and say, let's just try the principle of sharing. Let's try it. If it doesn't work, we'll go right back to the way we're doing. You know, the worst case scenario is we'll give some food to people who, who are perhaps going to die of starvation. So what, what, no harm, no foul, right? But according to Ben's master, if we try the principle of sharing, nearly overnight, it will eliminate hunger on this planet. Nearly overnight, we'll start to bring about justice. Nearly overnight, we'll start to bring about more trust amongst the nations. I mean, almost at a stroke, he says. But it will also give us a future in the end. So that's why the sort of cleavage is going on. I know it's painful. I'm having to deal with it too, just as everybody else is dealing with it. Like I said, no one's immune from it, you know. But um, anyway, might give you a little bit more hope and and perspective on what's what we're seeing in the world and in the news today. So, th but thank you very much for that. All righty. Well, anyway, you guys have a good rest of your day. I love you very much. Take care of yourself, and I'll look forward to putting up videos in the near future. And hopefully, you'll be around to listen to them. You guys have a great day. Remember to take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos.